Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Doctors who refuse to provide sex change operations could be struck off under new draft guidance proposed by the General Medical Council. The consultation draft, Personal Beliefs and Medical Practice, also says that doctors could be at risk if they are unwilling to prescribe contraception to an unmarried person, but willing to prescribe it to a married person. Section 5 of the guidance states that a doctor may choose to opt out of providing a particular procedure because of personal beliefs, but an exception has been made in the area of sex change procedures. Dr Peter Saunders of the Christian Medical Fellowship said, The problem is that 21st century British medicine now involves practices which many doctors regard as unethical. On the one hand, it says that doctors should be free to practice medicine in accordance with their beliefs, but if this involves denying patients access to appropriate medical treatment or services, then they must be prepared to set aside their personal beliefs. The BBC has come under fire over plans to host a live show on Radio 5 from an abortion clinic. Presenter Victoria Derbyshire is set to interview women who have chosen to have an abortion and some of the clinic's staff members. Just last month, it emerged that dozens of abortion clinics were allegedly breaking the law following surprise inspections ordered by the Health Secretary Andrew Lansley. Inspectors discovered that doctors were pre-signing abortion forms without meeting the women concerned or reviewing their medical notes. A spokesman for the pro-life charity Life has criticised the BBC's plans and accused it of giving free advertising to the clinic. It said, This programme would promote the clinics and the abortion industry at a time when it is reeling from recent allegations of improper conduct. But a BBC spokesman said the programme will be robust and challenging and will offer an opportunity for both sides to discuss their views. Premier Christian Radio has lost its High Court challenge against a decision to ban an advert that asked Christians to report their experiences of workplace marginalisation. The 30-second ad was due to air in the run-up to the last general election, but the Radio Advertising Clearance Centre stopped it, claiming that it was directed to a political end. Premier Christian Media had been granted a judicial review to challenge the ruling, but last week Mr Justice Silber upheld the ban and ruled that the RACC's decision was rational and lawful. Premier's Chief Executive Peter Kerridge has responded saying, The decision represents a direct threat to the democratic right to freedom of speech. It greatly reduces the right of ordinary people to have their say in democratic debates and, regrettably, seems to be wholly reminiscent of a totalitarian state. Homosexuality is not a fixed state, as many people think, according to prominent gay commentator Matthew Paris. Mr Paris, writing in the Times newspaper, dismissed the suggestion that there are two types of men, one heterosexual and the other homosexual. But while he insisted that he does not think that everyone can change, he said that male sexual orientation is less fixed than we may suppose. Mr Paris suggested that history describes same-sex attraction as a kind of habit, a diversion to which any man might be prone and into which any might be led. Something men do as opposed to something men are. Pressure is mounting on internet service providers to tackle online pornography, with MP Claire Perry warning that current safeguards are failing. Ms Perry, who recently chaired an inquiry into online child protection, said the inquiry had backed a default block on adult content with providers offering an opt-in system. She added that a curb on pornography would be a wonderful legacy to give our children. The time for common sense solution is here. We have got to act. But Google has said that with technology moving so fast, the idea that laws can adequately protect young people is a myth. Labour's Fiona McTaggart hit back saying, You can't say we're not going to use one of the most powerful tools in the box just because the big players don't like it. Police forces in Scotland have been told not to accept a gift of free Bibles from the Gideons because the book condemns homosexuality. The Gideons say they want to offer the Bibles, which feature a badge of the individual police force, as a memento and a valuable guide to life. But the Gay Police Association is against the move, claiming that its members have expressed concern that their force is officially endorsing a religious book containing text which condemns homosexuality. The Gay Police Association has previously been in trouble over an advert that linked Christianity with violence against homosexuals. But the Advertising Standards Authority ruled that its ad was untrue, indecent and unsubstantiated. Finally, 
Charles Colson, who was sent to prison for a crime linked to the US Watergate scandal, but later led a major Christian outreach ministry to prisoners, has died aged 80. Mr Colson, who had been known as the Hatchet Man during Richard Nixon's presidency, was jailed after pleading guilty for obstructing justice in a Watergate-related case in 1974. However, before he went to jail, he became a Christian, influenced by the reading of C.S. Lewis's book Mere Christianity. Chuck, as he became known, spent seven months in prison in Alabama, and on his release he promised fellow inmates that he would never forget those behind bars. Mr Colson went on to establish the Prison Fellowship, a group which seeks the transformation of prisoners and their reconciliation to God, family and community through the power and truth of Jesus Christ. With the prison population exploding and with the crime rate just soaring, uh, we're not dealing with the root causes of crime. So we're just putting men in cages, we're, we're treating them like animals, and then we expect them to come back out and be rehabilitated. So there's one way, and that's when a man turns his life over to Jesus Christ. The Prison Fellowship grew to become the world's largest outreach to prisoners, with Mr. Colson visiting around 600 prisons in 40 different countries. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.